Okay, so, okay, good. So I'm recording. All right, so if, if I become a product owner, you know, what am I gonna be doing? I know a lot of you are puzzled, you know, you have questions. Um, hopefully, we will, you know, we'll get through a couple of things right here and then you begin to understand, you know, what, are all, this, what, what all this is about. Um, IT business analyst, what am I gonna be doing? If I'm a project manager, what am I gonna be doing? And so on and so forth, right? So it's very, very important. Um, and, and this is gonna be our roadmap, right? This is gonna be our roadmap. We'll be touching on a couple of things. So what is a business analyst, a product owner, the techniques that I use, we're gonna be doing um, introduction. So um, take note of this. And guys, take note also as much as possible. I forgot to mention that. Um, get a book, get a pen, get something. Um, some things I expect you to know. Um, 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 if, if you were taking note, you know, um, we will not waste time to really trade on a couple of things. So take note as much as possible. So we'll do an intro, um, stakeholder need analysis, we'll touch on that. Software development life cycles, we'll touch on that. Requirement life cycle is something that we will touch on as well. General SDLC plus waterfall model, we will touch on that. So this is our roadmap. Um, we will work on Agile. It's gonna be a lot of case study. Um, you guys will have a lot of hands-on, so we will have a project. You guys will actually do the requirement elicitation, and then uh, you guys will build a requirement analysis, um, like a BLD, business requirement document. You guys will work on something like that. Um, different case, uh, you know, use case document. You guys will do a lot of case studies on, on that. Uh, you guys, I'll, I'll let you guys build elevators. You guys will build ATMs. You guys will build like a you know um, a gas pump machine, like a fuel station pump machine. You build a system, you know, like that, so that you know when users go over there, how they interact with the uh, machine and all of that. There's going to be a couple of exercises that are hands-on. Um, you're going to be able to build systems, put a um, 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 you know payment gateway in it. Uh, people should be able to pay at a gas station or the fuel um, you know pump station. Uh, we're going to be doing a couple of you know case studies on that. And then requirement analysis and transformation techniques. Uh, we will also touch on functional requirement, um, the specification, the types and examples, and then functional requirement versus non-functional requirement. Again, like I said, I know some of, some of you all are coming from engineering background. You might already have some idea, already know this. It's great, you know, and I love it. But we're gonna run very basic so that, you know, other folks, that they are not coming from engineering background, they will get this. Um, we will talk about requirement presentation. And then, you know, when you put all requirement together, if you're a product owner, if you're a business analyst, um, if you're on a project, you know, how do you present the requirement? You know, how do you present to the team? We will talk about that. Change control, right? So change control. So when, you know, a project starts and you're working on it, and then, you know, you're talking to stakeholders, stakeholders and the stakeholders come back and say oh no 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 we want to build this instead of maybe what whatever that has been discussed earlier so there's a process that it needs to go through so change management right um if we we it's gonna there's gonna be a departure from what originally we had intended to build there has to be a change management or change process um in there so who is going to approve this new change um to make sure that everybody is on the same page. So change control, or something we'll touch on. We'll touch on BRS versus SRS, uh, business requirement specification versus system requirement specification. We will also touch on a little bit on overview of testing, right? So do over your testing based on manual testing, different life cycle, UAT, impact analysis in software testing, uh, business analysis process, entity relationship diagram, decision tables, we'll do some database stuff, basically that's what it is. We'll, we'll touch on some database stuff. Um, and then we'll work on some VCO tutorial, process flow diagram tutorial, software configuration management tool, and then structured workflow. This, this list is not uh, um, um, like exhaustive. There might be a couple of things that, you know, we'll be learning along the way that maybe we didn't touch on over here. But this is the general roadmap, right? I know some of you are smart. So when you see some of these things, you begin to write it down and you begin to research so that you know you can stay ahead. Fantastic. I love guys or people like that. So go ahead, um, take note, 
you know, take certain things down and begin to research and begin to come, come around with questions. I love people, I love for people to come around with, you know, questions. Let me see if there's somebody in the waiting room, everybody's in now. Okay, great, 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 great. Let's go, keep going. So career pathways, I know some of you, um, you, you just, you're just doing the training, you're gonna be um, um, taking interviews, um, you're gonna be working on different domains. So data management, cybersecurity, IT infrastructure, digital transformation, there are different areas that you, know, um, you might be assigned to, you might be working. And pretty much the work of a PO or a product owner or a business system analyst or a project manager, um, it, it, there's an overlap. So when I say there's an overlap, that means a cut across board. So you could be in cybersecurity, there's still gonna be a need for a business system analyst in there. There's still gonna be a need for a product owner in there. There's still gonna need, be a need for um, a project manager in there. So it's overlap, right? There's an overlap in there for the roles that, uh, for the training that we're gonna be doing. You're gonna be able to work in all these areas as, as much as possible. Um, so let's talk about, you know, who is a business analyst? So if you like, uh, who is a product owner? Or, you know, maybe the project manager? Um, so what does the business analyst do? So the primary job or responsibility of the business analyst is to communicate with all stakeholders, right? So when you assign a project, you assign a job, you're not working for yourself, you're working for somebody. Some people own the um, platform or whatever you guys are building, it's not gonna be in isolation. So when you build, if you get it deployed, some people will actually get to use it, right? So these people are what we call stakeholders. Um, stakeholders, we have internal stakeholders, and we have external stakeholders, or the end client user. Um, so you will communicate with all stakeholders, you will elicit, analyze, validate requirements for changes to the business processes, um, or information systems and policies, right? So that is, you know, some of the roles or tasks of the business and we'll be getting to some more, because today I want to be able to get through with basic stuff like that. That, okay, this is what um, I'm likely to do when I'm put on or assigned to a project. So a professional business analyst or a product owner plays um, a big role in moving an organization towards efficiency, productivity, and then also profitability, right? Very, very important, guys. So when you are a PO, when you are a product owner, when you're a business system analyst, a project manager, you have a tax or your responsibility to uh, move the organization towards efficiency. How do you do that? So, you know, you look, you look at, you know, current state systems, and then as you liaise with product, um, um, the stakeholders, and then the, the other team members, you know, you re-architect processes, right? You look at a system that are not looking good, pain points in the system, what customers have been complaining, that you know, um, we having issues, we having problems with this. So um, we will need to maybe build a new enhancement, a new feature, you know, to take care of all the pain points, all the kind of problems that we have. Again, let me um, say this: that if you have question, anything, you can raise your hand or you can put it in a chat. You know, I will, I will definitely be looking out for that, and then I will address it. Um, so you have a responsibility of moving an organization towards efficiency productivity of course when systems are better when they are efficient um, the team is going to be able to do more and that is what we call productivity right you will increase productivity and of course when all these things are happening you know better systems better people um, um, better tools are there are working you know you guys have increased you know your capacity or your bandwidth um, does this will definitely also lead to profitability right the business is going to make more money um, Okay, let's move on. Understand what business does and how it does it, right? So you have a duty to be able to understand, okay, what is actually this platform, this system, this company, what are they actually in? What do they do, right? You have a responsibility um, to be able to understand, okay, how are they doing it? What kind of business are they in? And how are they doing it? And what ways can I improve um, on the process or improve on the business here? So you have a responsibility um, for that. Determine how to improve existing business processes. So all the time you're looking out for ways, okay, this process here, you know, this process here, how can we improve it? It's like, you know, you've been in Ghana, 
is that when I, when I'm in Ghana all the time, it's so funny. And then let's say you know, um, you know, you 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 stop by somewhere trying to buy food, and um, um, you you will have to catch the the eye of the uh, watch seller. Other than that, you know, because that there are no process maps in there. There are no processes in there. It's like you know, there are no queue management system so that when you come in, you know, to the watch seller, you know, this person came in first, and then you go in. You tell the person, okay, this is what I want. This is the menu. It's um, maybe stock one or stock two, stock three, or something that you want to buy. And you make the payment. Once you make the payment, your um, your request is queued, and then it's been attended to. But sometimes when you go to some food sellers joint, uh, food sellers corner in Ghana, you you will have to maybe you know befriend that lady or the befriend that seller. And then so when you come, they they immediately sees you, and then they serve you right. Sometimes you have to catch the eye, and when you can go to catch the eye, you know you get served. Um, but the better way uh, is to be able to have process maps in there, you know, so that when you go in, you know, you, there's a queue management system in there. Who come in first? Uh, it's, it's about first come, first serve, right? It's not about who catches the eye of, you know, Sister Hajia or you know Hajia Minu, you know Wachi or whatever that is, right? So determine how to improve existing process. So when you go anywhere. You look at how, you know, orders are coming in, if it's an e-commerce, if it's uh, whatever platform, you look at it as, okay, um, what are ways that I can improve this to bring efficiency? So you identify the steps or tasks to support the implementation of new features. So as you look at how things have been done, you're looking at, okay, um, I think it would be better if we had this in there. What are new features? You know, as you liaise with stakeholders, and then they tell you, you know, this is a problem that we have. This is what pain points that customers are complaining. You know, you need to start thinking that, okay, I think if we had this in there, it's going to be better. It's going to solve this problem that we have. So you, you have a responsibility to identify the steps or the tasks to support the implementation of the new features. And also, you also have a responsibility to design new features to implement and then analyze the impact of the implementation of new features. So not only do you want to bring efficiency, you also have to do what we call impact analysis. It's like, you know, uh, again, Ghana, you know, Tetekwashi. They build this nice um, interchange right there at Tetekwashi. And now it's like a nightmare. I've been, I've, been, I've been in that traffic. I was in Ghana. I was, I've been attracted traffic from, I think, from La Paz. And it was crazy. Like, you know, just turning around, maybe heading to East Ligon, heading to Spintest or something. So crazy. I'm like, the, the, the design is great. You know, we, wanted, we, we, we really wanted to solve a problem, but we didn't think about the traffic impact analysis. Nobody worked on any traffic impact analysis that when we do this, who, somebody should have been there for a week, for two weeks to do some research on the number of cars, maybe at this point in time of the day, from 6 to 8 p.m., from 5 to 7 p.m., you know, how many cars are going to be, you know, going around the ramp, you know, so that we can, we can study and know this is going to cause like a nightmare over here. There has to be, you know, that impact analysis. So you want to bring efficiency to the company. It's great. But when you do this, what is going to be the impact? Are customers going to be able to sign up more? This will help, you know, maybe in the um, checkout process. This will help in something, you know. So there has to be some impact analysis. You need to be able to analyze that. And then you implement these new features. So I still want to touch on, you know, their responsibilities. It is very important that I, I do this. Um, some previous session, I know some of, some of them are on. Uh, we didn't really go, go through this, and this is informational for them. So, you know, this is going to be what you're going to be doing. So work with leadership and other stakeholders to determine product design and roadmap, right? And um, define minimum viable product, that's MVP. MVP is what we call minimum viable product and product increment for delivery. So when you are put on a project, when you get assigned on a project, you're gonna be working with stakeholders. Who are stakeholders? Stakeholders, um, momentarily I'll be coming to that. I have a list of team members that you're gonna be working with and I'll touch on that. But for now, let me talk about stakeholders. So some stakeholders can be um, like a product manager. You're going to be working with a product manager. You're going to be working with maybe um, um, somebody VP for operations. You know, um, you're going to be working with, you know, um, subject matter experts or what we call solution owners, right? 
So let's say, you know, we are a bank, for instance. Our name is Bank, um, ABC Bank, right? Uh, we, are, we, are, we are financial institutions. That's a bank. So let's say um, ABC Bank. That's a company we, we all work for. Now, when you get into a bank, there are so many things from call banking operations to call center operations, marketing department, um, maybe sales department, compliance department, mortgage loans. There are so many departments in the bank. Right? Even wire transfer, there are wire transfer department, there are bill payment department. There are so many units or departments within the organization that takes care of a lot of things, right? So when we are building solutions, we are not going to be building the solution for the entire company, right? We're not going to be doing that. When you're working with marketing team, marketing team might be working on the website, you know, content, information that they display out there. So that when people come on the website or the platform, they will get the needed information to be able to make decisions, whether they want to sign up and open account on, um, with, the, with ABC Bank or not. So there are different stakeholders that you'll be working with from different departments, from wire transfer, right? From bill payment. All those people that you're going to be working with, maybe if there's a feature or there's a new product that they are introducing that you guys have to work on, you'll be working with a particular, a specific person from that department. So you're not going to be talking to the whole entire company, right? So you work with leadership and other stakeholders to determine the product design and roadmap, right? And define the minimum viable product. Anytime you hear MVP or minimum viable product, that means that you know, when you take a look at um, any kind of future that we want to build, there are so many things that we want to build, but we are going to be able to build all these things like in, in just a snap, just like that, the snap of a finger. We're not going to be able to do all of that. So we usually ask ourselves, what can we take to the market immediately? What is the smallest unit or the smallest chunk of what we want to build or the grand scheme of things, you know, um, the big idea. Um, we're looking at the product okay, as a bank, maybe we, we, we didn't have any feature of, um, um, you know, a wire transfer or maybe, you know, a money transfer feature, right? So ABC Bank, um, we've been doing great for the past maybe five years, 10 years, whatever. We've never had any feature of money transfer. So now, lead, you know, leadership, they sat down and said, you know what, let us build, you know, money transfer um, feature so that people will be able to transfer money um, to their loved ones, to their friends, to their family, anywhere, right? Great. So leadership will just say this from a very high level, very high level. They will, just, they will say this, but they don't really know exactly what needs to go in for us to be able to achieve the money transfer feature. So guys, guess what? What's going to happen? This feature that you know have been you know discussed at a very you know strategic level, senior managers level, you know CEO level is what they want to do. This now it is the duty of that department. It's going to be the duty of um, other stakeholders under the leadership to now begin to think. Okay, we are talking about money transfer, but what goes into money transfer? There is a local piece. There is an international piece, right? You can send money within maybe the country, if it's, if it's here in continental US, um, you should be able to send money to people in different states, to Florida, if I'm based out here in Atlanta, Georgia, you can send money to people in you know, Louisiana, people in you know, Tennessee, people in Kentucky, people in New York, Connecticut, you know, people in maybe Massachusetts, people everywhere in, within continental US. If it's in Ghana, you can send money to people in different regions from Western region to Shanti region to Greater Accra, Central region, Northern region, Savannah, whatever the name might be. People should be able to send money locally. It's fantastic. But if somebody wants to send money outside of their you know, jurisdiction, how does that happen, right? So now we begin to break the tax. We begin to break it into different pieces. Oh, okay. So if you want to send money, um, the local bit, there are compliance and local laws that we need to adhere to it. If you're trying to send money outside, that might not be as simple as that, you know. There are other laws by the, maybe the central or the governing bank, central governing bank laws that we need to comply with or we need to uh, be in compliance as well. And not only that, when you're sending money outside, there are a couple of things when it comes to the uh, actual systems, the actual product, the actual money that you're transferring, where is it going to? 
what is the um, you know connecting bank, you know the, the the secondary bank. There are so many things that you know it, it will have to correspond. Most of the banks in Ghana um, and elsewhere in Africa, they all have like a corresponding bank. When you're taking Echo Bank, when you're taking um, um, ADB, all those banks, they have a corresponding bank. So I think Echo Bank is like maybe Citibank or something like that here in America. So they all have different banks that they correspond, that's like corresponding bank. That helps them to do the international wiring, international transfer, whatever. So when you're looking at the MVP for just the money transfer, there's so many things. So we, the decision might be, okay, let's start doing it local, right? So let's start transferring money to ourselves locally, and then we'll begin to think about international, going international. So our MVP might be, let us have a goal, a roadmap that, you know, we can build a product that is going to be quick, that people can send money to themselves here in Ghana. And then we'll begin to worry about sending money abroad, right? So that is what we call MVP. So as a PO and as a business system manager, as a PM, as you work with them, you work with leadership and other stakeholders to define the product design. How are we going to design this? You're not just going to sit down by yourself and do this and, you know, so as you liaise with your stakeholder, they'll be telling you, okay, you know, if, if it would be nice for us to have this uh, button over here, this feature over here. We want our customers to be able to do this and do that. As you're talking about all this, you're making notes, you're writing these things down. And then when you are done, you might not necessarily be involved in the design process. Um, among the team members that you're working with, there's going to be a UI UX engineer. What UI UX mean is that user interface, you know, as, as you, I'll be, I'll be showing you guys, um, as matter, let me see if I can show you. Okay. So for instance, Bank of America, this is their website. I just took this, you know, I just captured this screenshot um, of Bank of America. This is, you know, Amazon, this is Amazon's website. Um, this is Wells Fargo Bank. This is eBay. All this, you know, we call this user interface, right? The UI. So when you look at the UI over here, um, somebody actually sat down. Um, there's a UI UX engineers on the, on, on, with Bank of America that they work with. So as you guys can see on the screen, there are a lot of designs, a lot of things over here, but all of these things have been, are carefully being coordinated. So there are, you know, visa debit cards that have been displayed. There are, there are there's also like a login um, feature on the left side over here, as you guys can see, the online ID passcode that you use to sign in. Um, over, over on top of that, there's like a header, um, a menu, checking savings, credit cards, home loans, auto loans, investing, better ha money habit. All these things, you know, have been positioned at the right place. All these things were not done just in isolation. Um, as a business system analyst, you are involved in this process, but you do this as you liaise with stakeholders, right? With your um, stakeholders. And as you talk to them, they'll say, okay, let's have the, the feature of maybe money transfer. Let's have it, you know, maybe at the upper right corner. Let's put a button where that is. Let's call it money transfer, something. Because it's a new feature that you guys are about to build, right? So you discuss it, you liaise with them, the UI US engineer, might come up with you know, an impression of how maybe that will look like if you put um, a money transfer button somewhere on the platform. So um, we'll, you know, you know, we'll come back to that. So you will talk to the different stakeholders, different people who will be involved in the product design or the UI UX design. I was talking about the UI UX. So UI means for those that are writing, UI means user interface, and then UX means user experience, right? Um, user experience. So you want to be able to deliver a product that you know essentially delivers great, awesome user experience. You don't want people to come to the platform and then they are finding it, or they will find it difficult to locate where they want to go or to be able to navigate their way around. So that's what we call user experience. You want the user experience to be seamless, effortless. Whatever they're looking for, it's right in front of them. They see it. They will not. They don't have to call call center or customer service and ask them, I'm looking for this feature. I'm looking for this functionality. Where can I locate it? That is not the way to go, right? So number two, as a product owner or business system manager or PM, you also have a responsibility to manage the product backlog by creating ideas, story mapping, designing prototypes, breaking down features into user stories, and refining them 
with the team. What does all these things mean? So the example of money transfer, right? There are so many things that needs to go into that example of money transfer. So you as a PO or the product owner, so guys, I'll be using you know PO, PO a lot. When I say PO or PO, I mean product owner or business system analyst, right? You are the, uh, um, the PO, as you're working with that department of money transfer, you know, you begin to make notes, you begin to say, okay, this feature for somebody to do this, uh, we will need the first name, we will need the last name, there has to be a user sign up, the person can be um, 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 a member of our bank, or the person don't necessarily have to be, you know, um, an, an account holder of our bank, right? So all of this determination is going to be made. You know, should we allow just a random person to just come on our platform and then send money on our platform without being a customer of the bank, ABC Bank, or anybody? You know, you you will need to have an account with us. You need to have established some level of relationship with us by having an account having you know maybe some cd investment product or something with us so all this determination is going to be made there's so much that goes in what is going to be you know um the minimum amount that people can send can they send you know a dollar or the minimum amount anybody can send on our platform should be 20 dollars or maybe 20 ghana cities or 20 um you know canadian dollars or something like that you know all this determination is going to be made. So you're going to be writing all these things, you know, as you engage with stakeholders. Okay, what's the maximum amount that we will allow anybody to send? If somebody wants to send beyond that threshold, what are we going to require? So there are a certain type of amount, right, that we can always allow people to transfer. But if you're going to exceed, if you're going to exceed a certain amount, we might require you some proof of, you know, uh, there might be some other evidences and other you know, um, documentation to establish your identity or something on the platform. So let's say if you're just sending up to maybe, you know, let's have a cap, let's say $200 or maybe $300 or 300 Ghana cities, right? We will not require you to bring, you know, proof of your work, proof of your income, whatever, you know, for us to be able to determine what we call, you know, fraud. Um, um, you know, we, 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 don't, we don't want to be, you know, working with people who are involved in fraud or identity theft or whatever you know we want to know that you are a great guy you're a good person you are who you you make a claim that you are right so that you know um when you transfer money we know this money is legit it's not coming out from some drug money or something like that right so there's going to be a threshold that we say okay if you send them more than maybe five thousand ghana cities or five thousand dollars will require you to have have proof of something before we can do that for you. So all these things you're going to be writing and that this is going to form what we call your product backlog, right? Product backlog. Product backlog is like the list of features, the list of things that need to go in for us to be able to get to the end product or the end game, right? Or the finish line. All those things are going to be drafted, are going to be, you know, you're going to be writing all these things down. Um, let me go and check whether somebody has a question. Like I said, if you have a question, put it in the chat. I'll raise your hand um, or something, and then I will I will definitely get to that. Um, so you know you're going to be put all together. You will map all these stories that you're writing, right? You design, you work with other folks um, on the platform to design prototypes, and then you break down these features into what we call user stories. Um, in in the development world, there are different frameworks, uh, all right? There are different methodologies that we use. So um, a popular, you know, methodology can be, you know, waterfall. Uh, waterfall is a one, one of the popular, you know, methodologies. Um, Agile is another, you know, framework or methodology that we use in, um, you know, developing applications or developing platforms and whatnot. Um, so you, you have a responsibility of that. Um, number three, you need to prioritize and align the team's work with, with one, one part of the company to ensure consistency right? Seamless customer experience across channels. So as you're doing this, you're looking at the entire vision or the overall vision of the company. And you, you try to ensure that, you know, whatever that you guys are building is consistent to what has been done previously, or is consistent with the vision, the core values of the company. It's very important. Um, you also have a responsibility to clarify problems that need resolving or that need solving. So test hypotheses or assumptions, conduct interviews, review researches, and then incorporate feedbacks and results into the journey design and measurement, right? So as you're doing this, guys, um, 
you're looking at, you know, uh, problems that people are bringing up and you are solving the problem for them. Um, you know, you, you, you're doing away with um, um, assumptions, risks, unknowns, uncertainties, and all of these things, right? So conduct interviews, you're talking to stakeholders, different subject matter experts within the department. You're trying to, you know, elicit more information, you know, get more information about these products, right? Um, you communicate the journey performance, update plans and successes within the business leaders and other teams. So as you uh, build the product with the team, development team, you will be communicating back to, you know, stakeholders to give them updates of, you know, where you are with this feature or with this product, right? Very, very important. Um, very, very important. So you plan, you write themes, user stories, you find a backlog, you create tags, you adopt the inspection, adopt mindset, right? Very, very important. You are responsible for interfacing with key business and technology stakeholders um, as you interpret, as you document critical business requirements. All these things are something that you're going to be doing. You will work closely with product groups lead, right? So different departments. Sometimes even if you are building um, 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 uh, money transfer feature, as, as our key example, money transfer feature, you will still have to work with not only money transfer department, you might work with compliance, right? Compliance is making sure that, you know, there are states, there are federal, you know, regulatory frameworks, um, compliance, you know, the, the, as a country, uh, central banking policies and other things that we need to adhere to. So as you're building the future, um, this feature of money transfer, you will still be talking and liaising with compliance department as well to make sure that what you guys are doing, you guys are not exceeding your powers. You guys are not doing more than you should, right? Uh, it's very important so that, you know, the bank, it's not going to be liable for lawsuits and, and whatnot. So it's very important. You provide key oversight on product requirement to ensure comprehension among stakeholders. So as you put together the product features, you know, um, you're talking to stakeholders to make sure that this is exact what we want to build and not anything more than that, right? So you drive tax from um, initiation point to deployment point. You're making sure that, you know, as you begin, as, as you begin with, um, you know, um, talking to stakeholders from requirement gathering perspective, um, you work all your way up to, you know, deployment. Um, you assist in management of daily stand-ups, sprints, scheduling, planning. We'll talk about all these daily stand-ups, sprints, scheduling, all those things um, in subsequent um, sessions. Um, you design technical workflow diagrams. Um, we'll talk about all these things. There's going to be exercises on workflow diagrams. You guys will work on that. Software documentation. Sometimes you work on um, user manuals, training manuals, all these things, very easy. We will work on all these things. So, um, you, know, you know, put that somewhere, you know, keep that in mind. You translate design requirement to the UX UI team to produce working prototype. So as, you know, um, the department is saying, we want to build this, we want to do this. All those things, you put it together and then you work with UI UX team. They'll come out with good, you know, renditions of the designs that, you know, um, it will appeal to your um, audience. Um, understand and inter um, the interaction of different software components. So you understand how the processes work. If somebody come on the platform, they start filling in this name, the first name, their last name, all this data, where does it go? What department handles it, right? Who gets to approve or deny the process along the way? So you begin to understand all these workflows and different components within the application process, right? Very important. Multi-discipline with broad, mature experience. So you come to the table as an adult, right? If you're working here, you come to the table as an adult and we expect you to behave as such. Um, so detail-oriented with, with excellent writing and communication skills. So this is also very important. As you um, work on you know, solutions and as you coordinate with a team, um, you expect to communicate with them. Sometimes it's gonna be verbally, sometimes it's gonna be written. And you need to make sure that um, you have excellent um, you know, writing skills and communicating skills, very important. So this is an example of, you know, um, a typical Bank of America, you know, website. And as a PO and as a business analyst and a project manager, you might be involved in something like this, but not the entire platform, but a feature over here. It could be a feature on checking account. It could be a feature on savings account. It could be a feature on credit cards, home loans, auto loan, an investment product, whatnot. It goes, the list goes on and on. This is Amazon, same thing. You know, there are different categories of product verticals and you are expected to, you know, maybe build a feature around this. So e-commerce, right? You know, this is Wells Fargo as well. This is another, you know, bank as well. This is eBay, um, a shopping platform. You guys are, are familiar with this. This is insurance. You might be working with an insurance domain 
people might be coming on the platform, they'll enter their zip code, they will buy different insurance products, whether for their car, for their home, for their boat, for whatever. People can even insure their own body. And you guys need to know. So blue cloth, blue shield, of um, um, uh, blue shield, this is health in healthcare. So you guys might be working with a healthcare company. People might come in, they'll buy different products, you know, to take care of their healthcare. So something to keep in mind as well. Uh, so there are several domains, finance and banking domain, insurance domain, agriculture domain, e-commerce, healthcare. You might be consulting with federal government, automobile. You might be working for a car um, manufacturing company. It could be Nissan, it could be Chevrolet, it could be Hyundai, it could be a, uh, several of these um, automobile companies, right? It could be a consulting company as well. So you can be working for a consulting company that consults for other companies, right? Uh, you could be working for a sports and recreational you know, company, travel and tourism, um, and a real estate, et cetera. So there are de different domains that after this session, uh, you guys will be working for. When I say domains, it means industries, right? So there are different types of industries uh, that you guys are working for. But the principle or the core principle remains the same. Whether it is finance, banking, insurance, agriculture, it overlaps. It cut across board. So whatever that we're going to be learning, um, when you are in insurance, it's not going to change. When you're in healthcare, it's not going to change. When you're consulting for a federal government, it's not going to change. When you're in an automobile company, it's not going to change. Uh, when you're in consulting, it's not going to change. When you're in real estate, it's not going to change. That's, that's what I want you guys to know. So different industries, different domains, but the principles and the way that we build solutions remain the same. It's not going to change. So let me run through this quick and I know our time is almost coming to the end. So this is a typical role that you will find yourself in, right? As a product owner, business analyst, or whatever, you know, you're going to be working with this type of roles and even more, right? But this is just a handful of roles. So when you go into any kind of environment, you need to know your executive sponsor, okay? You need to know your executive sponsor. The executive sponsor is like, you know, the VP of technology or the CTO, the chief technology officer. It could be chief operating officer. It could be somebody, but he's the executive sponsor. What does he or she do? So the executive sponsor is like the overall for the entire team members. He's the one that manages the budget. That has approved the budget that this project that we're going to be building, this solution that we're building for the company, for Bank of America, for Wells Fargo, for this future of, um, let's, let's use our our case study example of the money transfer. This new feature, uh, we're gonna cut a budget of maybe $1.5 million or $2 million or $5 million. This is the budget for this new feature that we want to build. So that is the executive sponsor. He, you know, he oversees, have oversight of whatever that we're trying to build you know, for the company. He, he's gonna be the one that's gonna be paying us paying everybody, every employee, everybody that's tied to the project, he's the one that is paying them. So that means this person is very, very an important personality and you need to pay attention to him, right? So the executive sponsor is somebody that you're gonna be working with. But the executive sponsor typically is very, very busy, as you will imagine. He or she is gonna be a very busy person and you'll be lucky to get the executive sponsor in a meeting to ask him questions about the um, the, the product that you guys want to build, that is the money transfer. You'll be so lucky to find the sponsor in a meeting and then ask him questions. So what does he do? He will relinquish or he will, you know, give you the solution owner and say, hey guys, um, I'm, I'm supposed to be in your meetings and be talking about the money transfer and whatever features that we want to commit, we want to build. But I'm, as you guys know, I'm tired in a lot of meetings. Uh, um, you know, my daily schedule is like busy, super, 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 you know, super busy. So you guys will be working with the solution owner, right? He's going to be the owner for this um, money transfer piece. So that's the solution owner. But the solution owner is also another very busy person, even though, you know, he, he understands money transfer. He will be able to give you all the information that you need, right? As a PO, as a business analyst or whatever, you know. But the solution owner is also a very busy person. And so what does he do? He will give you somebody within that department and say, work with this subject matter expert. So let's say if it's a bill payment, uh, there's going to be somebody in that department that is a subject matter expert. He understands bill payments, you know, e e everywhere. So bill payments that are within the company, bill payments that are external, that, you know, we can pay. So when I say bill payments within the company, for instance, internally, 
um, let's say as a bank, ABC Bank, we issue you know, credit cards or debit cards, or let's say we, we give people mortgage, whatever, money to buy house, buy, buy homes and whatever. You know, we give people you know, money to buy new cars. So what, what do the people do? So that means that the people will be paying us a monthly bill, right? This is internally. So he's a subject matter. He understands the processes that goes in. And there are other bill payments that as a customer of the bank, you can also make. For instance, you can pay your T-Mobile um, phone bill. You can pay your Verizon phone bill. You can pay your Vodafone phone bill. You can pay your MTN phone bill. You can pay your, you know, any type of bill. But this bill is now within the bank. It's outside of the bank, right? So it takes a different format and a different approach um, when it comes to bill payment. But this subject matter expert, he understands this process very well. So when we are confronting him and where we are having a stakeholder meeting, trying to understand what is the pain point, what is the new feature that we're trying to build for bill payment, he will be able to break things down and also let us know this is exactly what we're trying to build over here. So that's the subject matter aspect, right? So, and then we have a project manager. A project manager typically coordinates the effort of the team. Sometimes the same role like a PO and a business analyst, um, they write, gather requirements, make sure that the team is on track, coordinate the efforts of the team, trying to make sure that there are no roadblocks, there are no impediments, there are no blockers. If there are any impediment, he, he or she will escalate those issues and resolve these issues in a timely fashion so that the team can advance, can move on, can get ahead, right? That's a work, typical work of a project manager. And then we have the product manager. The product manager of this you know, feature that we're trying to build is the one that owns the vision and the roadmap for this feature. So if we're trying to build um, money transfer, the product manager is going to be the one who carries the vision and the roadmap and say, Q1, first quarter for 2021, I want to achieve this feature, this MVP of this feature. Q2, the second quarter for 2021, from April, May, June, I want to achieve this. Q3, the third quarter for 2021, I want to achieve this piece. Q4, the last quarter for 2021, I want to do this. So that's the product manager. The vision, the roadmap, he defines it. He tells the team, this is what we want. We need to achieve by, by this time. We have end users. So when we are building solutions, we are not building it for ourselves. We're building it for operations team to be able to use it, right? So when we build an application, you know, it is just so that our operations team or DevOps team or whatever, they'll be able to administer their function or their role. So that is um, the um, end user or the operations team or even customers that are sitting at home that they should use it. Uh, and then we have the business analysts that we have talked about so much, uh, the product owner we've talked about so much, and then developers. You're gonna be working with developers on a daily basis, software engineers. So that the people, when you put all this requirement together, they actually code it. They actually transform the requirement into machine readable format, into a way that computers can understand, right? So the developers or the software engineers are the people that you will work with also to make sure that you know, the requirement are being translated to them in the proper format that they can understand so that they can build the solution. And then we have software test engineers. So when applications are built, we will not just ship out or you know, deploy it out immediately. We need to test the application to make sure that it actually works as expected. And so there are folks that you'll be working with that we call them software test engineers or QA, quality assurance folks. So these people will ensure that, you know, yes, they will test it, they'll give their report, they'll give their sign off on it and say, yes, it's looking good. Everything is working as perfectly as we expected. Let's go ahead and now let's deploy it live so that customers can start using it at home, right? This new feature. And so that is the work of the software test engineers. And you're gonna be working with these folks. Data modelers, DBAs, infrastructure analysts, application architect, all of these people are all different roles that you'll be working with. And of course, UI US engineer. UI UX engineer will give you good, great design, great user experience impressions that you know you're going to be building. So, um, you know, for today, this is what I want us to capture. We've captured a lot, and this is good information. I'm just going to open um, the way. If you have any question, quick. I know we have exceeded our minute by um, three minutes, or so it's 7:03 right now. It's already 12:03 in Ghana. If you're joining, and I know other folks that are joining from Canada, um, James as well, you're joining from Canada. So. Um, if you have any question, um, this is what's going to be for, for today. Uh, if not, we will continue tomorrow. So tomorrow, we're going to take a deep dive. We're going to get into analysis proper. We're going to get into requirement stuff proper. Um, if there are no questions, I'm going to be watching the chat room for, let's say, 15 seconds um, to see if there are questions that are coming in there. If there are no questions, then that means 
Um, that is gonna be it for today. Tomorrow, we will continue. Make sure, again, make sure that when you are signing in, you sign in with a name that I recognize. If you're not signing with a name that I recognize, um, I'm not gonna allow you in. Um, so that's it. I have to know that this is Richard. This is um, 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 Larry. This is this name. If it's not a name that I, I, I recognize, that's it. You're not gonna be able to um, do that. Yes, all the recordings, I'm, I'm, I, I, it's gonna be put on YouTube. I'm gonna give you guys the channel um, and I'm gonna put all the information out there. And I also have some um, Google Drive that I'll be sharing with you guys as well. So all the recordings are gonna be there. You can go over there and then download and watch, do whatever that you want to do um, when it is shared with you. Yes, the recordings are gonna be available. Uh, Benis, um, thank you for your question. Who else has a question? Anything else, guys? Any question, L, um, question? All right, so that, that is gonna be it. Thank you, guys. We will meet tomorrow. We will meet